Let's get it back outside to John Elliott. He is live at the Intrepid with our first alert forecast. Hey, John. Who's your writer? Come on. It's going to be rough. I love that. All right. So uh, clearly we're barking up the wrong tree here. So every now and then you hear Jenna DeAngelis or uh, Natalie Dudridge. They're the masters, mistresses of ceremony, I guess that would be here. And we are we've got about 2,000 walkers here. The goal is about a million dollars for lupus research. Right after weather, I'm going to talk to uh, introduce you to a lupus advocate, someone who is uh, living with lupus and what it means to live with lupus with some of these new modalities and some of these new treatments that are available. All right, first off, let's get you outside and living in the sun. Man, it feels good. It feels so good. Such a nice change from the chilly temperatures earlier in the week. Here on the west side and in the city, in the heart of it all, very nice. Sunny skies in 54 right now. Light wind out of the east at three miles an hour. So we are going to see a gorgeous day today. It's already underway. Showers return tomorrow, during the day and at night. And it's going to be milder next week. However, it is a little unsettled. These on again, off again showers. Today is really the pick of the next five, probably. Mid to upper 60s, 67 is above normal in the city. And we may even see a few readings close to 70 today. Definitely more of that next week. So this is it. For many, it's a uh, peak color time right now as far as the fall foliage. You know, I mean, to really have a standout year, we're missing some of the elements because, and one of the big reasons is because of the drought conditions. What you need for a real vibrant palette is a uh, wet growing season, no widespread drought during the summer season, and then warm sunny days and cool nights with no big wind events. We've kind of missed the mark. That's why we aren't going to see as much brilliant color, but now's the time to get out there and enjoy some of that color. One of the real realities we're dealing with is we still have drought conditions. Even though the darker browns have retreated, we still have some real serious deficits to talk about. We've had a wet October, but you look at the seasonal deficits for parts of Connecticut and parts of New Jersey and even out on the island over five inches to Bridgeport minus 6.77 for a deficit. We're going to make up a little bit of that? Yes. Uh, not so much today but tomorrow. In fact that's what's going on with the composite radar and satellite. You annotate that with this active area low pressure that's riding up north and that's why it's going to be wet Sunday night and then it's on and off really through Wednesday. But I want to stress on and off. No day is a washout. Sunday's probably the busiest day. The graphs actually, this is one of the computer forecast models we use. It has almost two inches for the two-day period, Sunday into Monday. The European not as aggressive, and it all depends on where those bands set up, but that's what you are up against. Today, get out there and enjoy it. 67 feels good. Now remember, Sunday starts dry. Clouds will be around all day. It's Sunday night into Monday where we see some showers and these on again off again showers right through Wednesday but it will be warm again here this morning west side 2000 about 2000 we'll get some exact stats in a bit for the lupus research alliance raising money to help improve lives earlier this morning I spoke with uh, Ruth Wilson who is a lupus advocate and asked her what's it like living with lupus I have good days and bad days uh, is how I would explain it but uh, thankfully, because of research, I get to have treatments that can help me uh, live a better life. What's a big misunderstanding or misconception people have about lupus? Um, I would say probably that everybody, it's like a one size fits all and everybody's different. Everybody's lupus is different. All the treatments that we have out there might work for somebody, but might not work for another person. Frustration comes also when uh, you're trying to get diagnosed. Um, on average, people it, it takes about six years for people to get diagnosed with lupus, and you see lots of different doctors until they just, you know they they figure out what's wrong with you. And the reason is because lupus involves many organs, and everybody has different symptoms, so it's really difficult to uh, diagnose 
uh, the disease. You have to take care of yourself. We, uh, we lupus warriors, we take really good care of ourselves. Uh, you know, stay away from the sun, take your medications, eat healthy, uh, you know, stay away from gluten, dairy. Um, you know, so people always ask me, like, what do you even eat, right? <laughs> uh, but you, you, you find ways and you get used to eating gluten-free, you know, uh, but that's just how it is. And you get, you know, to learn about the disease and educate others. So uh, that's really good for the lupus community. I got to tell you, I was struck by, first off, she's got this uh, wonderful spirit and this great optimistic attitude. but taking six years to be diagnosed it's very difficult to pinpoint this disease and it impacts so many different organs and organ systems that's why research is so vital there are some new drugs there are now some lupus specific drugs that's relatively new so we're going to talk about that in fact we have a uh, one of the uh, doctors on the team here try to uh, get him off the stage in our next half hour and talk to our colleagues from channel two too. Right now, though, on the uh, beautiful sun-kissed west side, we'll send things right back to you right up the street in the studio. Yes, yeah, I was shocked by that, too. Six years. I, I can't even imagine the relief yeah. once you're finally yeah. diagnosed with it. Mm -hmm. John, thank you.